today I want to answer a very important question. Which motor is best? Is a mid-drive a better motor? Or is a hub motor a better motor? What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video from Bolton E-Bikes. I'm really excited because today I'm wearing my Blackbird t-shirt. I have the Biconet Warthog bikes out here and both of those things for good reason. They are finally loaded in containers and on the water on the way to the US right now. So everybody that's been waiting very patiently for the Warthog bikes will be getting them very soon. Everybody that's been waiting for the first batch of Blackbirds will also be getting those soon. And of course, there will be more to follow right behind that. And I brought out the Warthog bikes from Biconet because this is a perfect example of how different motors make sense in different situations. We wouldn't make this bike in a mid-drive and a hub motor if there wasn't a reason for each type of motor. And by the end of this video, you're gonna know which one of these motors is the right one for you. Before we get any further, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Let's just recap real quick how these motors even work in the first place. Where do they get their power from? What determines how much power they actually use? First, there is the battery, which these bikes, of course, have dual batteries. They're 48 volts, so you have battery voltage, and then you have a motor controller. Now, on these two bikes, the motor controller is kind of tucked inside. You can't actually see it. In the hub motor, the controller is tucked inside the frame right here. In the mid-drive, it's kind of integrated into the motor housing and it looks like part of the motor, but it is a separate piece. The voltage of the battery times the amps of the controller equals the watts going to the motor. So this bike is rated at 750 watts because the voltage of the battery times the amperage of the controller is rated for a continuous output of 750 watts. This bike we sell at a rated 1000 watts. You can tune the speed down, of course, which is why we have it as a class two. If you look at the sticker, it says 48 volts, 750 watts, speed 20 miles an hour. And all of you have that have watched my videos before know that if you unlock it, it might go a little bit faster than that. But that's how it's rated, that's how it's set up out of the box. A hub motor or a mid-drive is not inherently more powerful than the other. It depends entirely on the motor itself. There are hub motors that range anywhere from 250 watts up to 10,000, even 20,000 watts or more. And the same goes for mid-drive motors. You might have a mid-drive motor that's 250 watts to be legal in Europe. You might have some crazy off-road vehicles that have motors up to, again, 15,000, 20,000 watts. So one motor is not necessarily more powerful than the other. It just depends on the battery, the controller, and the specific motor that's used. There are two other items that I think people assume apply to one motor or the other, and that's not always true. One would be the torque sensor. The torque sensor is the pedal assist, so when you actually turn the pedals around, it's the sensor that detects the movement and then gets the bike to move without using the throttle. Now, a lot of people think that a torque sensor is something you only find on a mid-drive motor, and that's actually not true. Many of you know about the Blackbird bike. It is a hub motor, but it has a torque sensor. This bike is a mid-drive, and yeah, it does have a torque sensor as well, but bikes like the Foxbat, which use a different mid-drive motor, have a cadence sensor. Now, the second thing I wanna mention is regenerative braking. Here I have two bikes, one with a mid-drive and a rear internal hub shifter, one with a geared hub motor in the back, and neither of these have regenerative braking. In fact, I think you'll find that most e-bikes do not have regenerative braking. Regenerative braking in most cases doesn't actually do a whole lot. It's a very minimal increase in range. It is, however, handy for 
That's what's creating the noise today. It is, however, very handy for slowing a big, heavy bike down. Now, if I was to ask you which motor is more likely to have regenerative braking, which would you say? I'm guessing many of you are going to say a hub motor. And if you go to what's called a direct drive hub motor, regenerative braking is usually always enabled or available, very easy to do. However, there are some new motors that are geared hub motors like this, where there's a reduction inside that also allow for regenerative braking, but it's not what I would consider mainstream yet. Now, if we go to a mid drive, most people might think because of the freewheeling mechanism in the rear wheel here, that regenerative braking is not an option. And on this particular bike, yes, that's true. This doesn't have any regen of any sort. If you want to slow down, you got to use those nice four piston brakes and those big rotors to help you stop. However, there are several mid drive e-bike things on the market that may or may not be bicycles with pedals, but things very similar to how e-bikes work. And they actually have regenerative braking too. I have a bike at my house right now that I haven't put on any videos because I'm not sure if it's something we want to sell in the future or not. It's a mid drive. It has a ton of power. It's very similar to a bicycle and it has not only regenerative braking, but it's variable regenerative braking, which means that I can control how much regen I put in and how much to slow the bike down, which is really, really awesome. So regen doesn't really matter whether it's a mid drive or a hub motor. It can actually be found on either and it's usually found on neither. Now, since these are Bafang motors and we can easily look up the specs, I checked and the G510 motor that's used here, often referred to as the Ultra, has a waterproof rating of IP65. If we jump over to the hub motor, guess what? It also has an IP rating of IP65. So as far as water resistance goes, they are exactly the same. Now, what about efficiency? This is a big one, and I think I see people argue both ways that a hub motor or a mid-drive motor is gonna be more efficient for one reason or another. But what do the manufacturers say? Now, these are both Bafang, so by using the same brand, they're not trying to inflate one number over the other to try and get you to buy it because they make both types of motors. And according to their spec sheet, these are at least 80% efficient. And in my mind, that's pretty interesting because it's not that good. <laughs> there are motors that exist on the market for other applications that are well above 90%, even 95%. I've even done some research and found motors that are above 98%. Imagine if we updated these motors to be more efficient and we're able to get an increase of 10, 15% more range just by changing the brand of the motor. As far as the motors themselves are concerned, however, one is not more efficient than the other. However, there are circumstances where that could apply. And to answer that question, I need to show you a little bit more about how these actually work. The Bafang hub motor is basically like what it sounds. It's a motor in the rear hub. So the motor is sitting inside this case and the spokes are laced from the rim directly to the motor case. The cassette can freewheel, so that means you're not turning the motor over if you're just coasting along forward. You can pedal this like a regular bicycle and the motor is not causing any extra drag. But if you turn the motor on, this is going to spin the entire wheel. It's mounted firmly to the axle here on both sides. And effectively, because the motor is laced directly to the wheel, you have one speed. So this motor has to be set up kind of optimized for a wide range of conditions. Whether you're going up a steep hill, you're going on flat ground, you're going downhill, basically this motor has to do all of those things with just one gear effectively inside. So yes, there's a, a reduction, so it spins at the right RPM and everything, but when it comes down to it, if you wanna go up a really steep hill, the motor either can do it or it can't. You can't shift up or down through your gears here because that's only affecting your own pedaling 
and it's not doing anything as far as the internals of the motor. So it doesn't matter if I'm pedaling. If I just lean this over on the kickstand, I can run the throttle, and you see that the motor spins without anything else moving. The rest of the drivetrain is perfectly still, and you can just sit on the bike like that, run the throttle up, and have a ton of fun. And you can see why this is very easy on the drivetrain, because it's not affecting it whatsoever. And if you let go of the throttle, the motor coasts very nicely. I don't have any power on right now, and you can see it's just freewheeling like a standard bicycle wheel would until I hit the brakes. For a mid-drive, however, the motor is mounted up near the cranks, and it drives the front sprocket. Now, the cranks are freewheeling, so if the motor is spinning, you don't have to pedal. And then that sprocket drives the rear wheel. Now, in this bike, it might be a little bit confusing, but this is a five-speed hub. So there are actually five speeds inside of this rear hub that can be shifted through just like a chain and a derailleur would be. But instead, this particular bike uses a belt drive. That means that the hub motor, which only has one speed, has a limited range from the low end of torque. It's basically a balance between how much power and how much high end top speed. The mid-drive motor can effectively have the best of both worlds. You can shift into a nice low gear to go up a steep hill, and then you can shift up into a high gear if you want to go really, really fast. So a bike like this has just as much torque as the hub motor, but it will go over 40 miles an hour if you happen to unlock it, whereas something with a hub motor like this is going to top out around 30 miles an hour. And you can see the crank up here freewheels, so you don't have to pedal when the motor is moving. But we have the advantage of gears. So that's one speed. And then if we shift into the highest gear, check out how fast this wheel's gonna spin. Now the maximum speed is going to be limited by the power of the motor, so the theoretical RPM unloaded, basically where there's no weight on the bike, there's no rider on it, no wind resistance, that says 49 miles an hour. It doesn't go quite that fast, but it's not far from it. But you can see how the gearing can add a significant amount of top speed, and you can have the same effect on the low end, a slower speed at the rear wheel, but more torque. Now, I mentioned the efficiency of the motors was 80% on both, but when it comes to getting the power to the road, is one actually more efficient than the other? That depends on the terrain, because if we're going up a really steep hill, we can shift down into a low gear and effectively run the motor at a very efficient RPM. With the hub motor, it's gonna be working harder at a low RPM setting, and it's gonna get the job done, but it's probably not working at peak efficiency. However, with a mid-drive, we have to also account for drivetrain losses. Typically, a chain, uh, you're gonna lose 15%. So if we start adding all of those things up, you can imagine if the motor's 80%, and then you lose another 10 or 15% to the rear wheel, there's a pretty hefty percentage of the power from your batteries that's not actually getting to the road. And that's just the nature of how e-bikes work. There are some losses, and I would love to see some improvements in all of those things over the next few years. It's definitely something we're thinking about at Bolton e-bikes and Bolton Labs specifically. But right now, I think that if you're at an optimum RPM for the motor, a hub motor will probably be more efficient because you aren't accounting for drivetrain losses, you're not losing anything because of your chain or your belt, whereas on a mid-drive you are. However, if the hub motor's not in the optimal or ideal RPM, then there's a good chance the mid-drive could be more efficient. So you're really splitting hairs, I think, between the two, the way that they're designed today. I think it's more of a personal preference as far as efficiency wise. Do you need something that has a wider envelope, basically can have more torque on the low end, more speed on the high end, then maybe a mid-drive makes sense? Or 
Do you want something simpler? And to me, this is the number one thing that makes a difference between the two motors. You wouldn't believe how many people come into Bolton e-bikes thinking they want a bike with a hub motor or they want a bike with a mid-drive and after test riding, they actually choose the opposite of what they had read about online. The way the motors operate when you actually ride the bike is very, very different. With a mid-drive motor, there's a little bit more going on because if you're coming up to a steep hill, you not only can shift down to a lower gear to get more torque to make it up the hill, you need to. So you have to be a little bit more conscious and thinking about and, and aware of your surroundings with a mid-drive motor. Whereas a hub motor, it doesn't matter if you're in the wrong gear, the motor's not gonna care, it's gonna take you up the hill anyway, maybe not as efficiently, but it's gonna get the job done. And you just need to change gears when you feel like you need to change gears to get more comfortable, whether you need a higher cadence or a lower cadence. I think if you're comfortable riding an e-bike, if you don't mind shifting through the gears, all of that comes naturally, then there's no disadvantage in that regard as far as usability of the motor. But if you're a little bit more hesitant about riding an e-bike, you haven't ridden in a long time, there's a very, very good chance that you are going to find a hub motor much easier and simpler to actually use. And I think that also goes along with the durability. Is one stronger or more, more durable than the other type of motor? And I think if used properly, the answer is no. So that kind of goes back to the last thing we talked about. If one is easier to use, then for some people, it might end up being more reliable. And I think for reliability and ease of use, the winner is going to be the hub motor. And here's why. I have had people before riding a powerful mid-drive bike like this with a chain and a derailleur on the back and they shift into the wrong gear and give the bike some throttle and literally there's enough power in this motor to rip the chain right off the bike. It's a little bit scary to think about that the bike has that much power. It's also awesome because if you want that much power, it's there. Now, I don't want that to scare people away from buying mid-drives. I personally ride a mid-drive bike. Thousands of people do and absolutely love them. And the reason is because of the performance. I can get a wider range of speed out of the bike if you want maximum performance, then I highly recommend taking a look at a mid-drive that may be exactly what you want. If you want something a little bit simpler and a little less intimidating as far as the operation, then I think a hub motor is often the better choice. One of the other things I was curious about was weight. Is one motor heavier than the other? And interestingly enough, I looked up both of the most recent Bafang motors rated for 1,000 watts and the mid-drive comes in at 5.3 kilograms and the hub motor comes in at 4.1 kilograms. So there is a slight advantage to the hub motor on weight, not only because the motor itself is a little bit lighter, but if you think about the rear hub motor, that means you're also replacing the weight of the existing stock hub. So it looks like, at least for Bafang, it's possible to make a slightly lighter bike if you actually go with a hub motor instead of the mid-drive. That's just one example that may not be the case with all brands. Thanks again for watching another video from Bolton e-bikes. I hope that answers the question, narrows things down a little bit for you as far as which motor is best for you. Should you go with a hub motor or a mid-drive? Let me know in the comments which one you think is the better fit for the type of riding that you're gonna do. If you learned something, make sure to hit that like button. Also subscribe if you haven't already. I know a high percentage of you are watching the videos and aren't yet subscribed. Stick around, there's gonna be a lot more fun, a lot more e-bike videos to come and if you want to see how fast these particular bikes actually go check out this video right here where I do a top speed test on each one